as a presidential candidate of the PDP, Atuku Abubakar. Senator Melaye, how easy will it be for you? You are one of those uh, that have been tagged as uh, those ones that go with gloves in uh, ready to battle any of your opponents. Uh, but how easy will it be? You go on social media, you go all out, any opportunity you have to defend your party and your candidate. But how are you able to stay away from some of these things that have been, uh, politicians have been warned against you? Anyway, I want to say that uh, the PDP, like I said, is a very responsible party. And by the grace of God, um, we are going to operate within the confines of the law and the provisions of the Electoral Act as um, amended. And I want to say we have no problem with um, all the extant provisions of the um, Electoral Act. And um, we have 100%, uh, we are going to comply 100% with uh, the custom, the tradition, and um, pronouncement as agreed uh, on today. And um, I mean, we're, we're, we're good to go. What is the reason behind your, the style in which your presidential uh, candidate uh, flagged off his campaign? You saw what happened with the Labour Party presidential uh, uh, candidates yesterday. He was in Joss to flag off his presidential campaign. Is there a reason for uh, your candidate flagging his own off in the corner of his office? Anyway. What is important to Nigerians now is not to, it's not the hiring of crowds, it's not mobilizing people on the streets. It is the message and what you have to offer Nigerians. And that is the message delivered today by Atiku Abubakar. He spoke to the issues and proffered solutions to the problem of this country. He gave analytical um, um, data and uh, postulations that will help Nigeria to recover from our present calamitous situation. Atiku proved that he's going to be a digital president. He proved that he understands the problems of this country. He proved that he is, I mean, um, capable, he has capacity and um, capability to solve our, our problems. And he's going to be a president that will show, that will be very decisive and will confront these issues headlong. So, I mean, um, it's not a matter of style. It's a matter of sincerity of purpose, of heart and commitment towards building a new Nigeria where corruption will not be the order of the day, where it will be safe for everybody to move from one part of this country to another. Be before we go into the issue, is also, I mean, to also look at the procedure in which you wanted to, to go about. Is this what you're going to be seeing, or you've not explained to us why your candidate chose this title? All the time, he did that on Facebook. He announced in 2019, he announced uh, his intention to run for president on Facebook. This time around, he's doing that via a recorded video from his office. Is this what we expected to see from his campaign? Yeah. Is and this a style or is this a one-off? I'm trying to make you understand that what he did today is a broadcast. If you, um, you will recall yesterday also, we had um, the inauguration of the PCC and he made an elaborate um, speech there, and he spoke also to the issues of um, the campaign. So this is just a continuation of flagging of what we have for Nigerians. And you should expect many more approach to solving the problems of this country to, I mean, very um, digital um, electioneering campaign and very sincere one for that matter. All right, we'll take a breather, but I'm being told now that uh, Canada John Onayeko, a member of the National Peace Committee, is live with us. It's good to see you. Canada John Onayeko, thank you so much indeed for joining us tonight. But we'll take a breather, and when we come back, we will be able to touch on so many issues pertaining to this campaign and these 2023 elections. What should be done and the expectations of Nigerians, the spokesperson of the PDP presidential campaign, is also with us, Senator Dino Melai. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. It's all about how we can achieve a peaceful, violence-free election the one that is devoid of hate speech, 
and fake news. How can we achieve that? The National Peace Committee has set the ball rolling, bringing together uh, politicians and their political parties to ensure that they sign a peace accord in this respect. A member of the National Peace Committee, Kaduna John on Aikon, joins us uh, live from Abuja. Um, thank you so much, Kaduna John on Aikon, for joining us tonight on the program. It's good to see you again. And Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll thank come you in a moment. Thank Canada, you very much. Uh, give me a moment uh, with uh, uh, Senator Dino Melaya. I'll be back with you just in a moment. It's good to touch base with you. Uh, Senator, uh, what we've seen today, um, the ball is uh, now rolling and the game has started. The question is, what is your party bringing to the table? First, I will try. I will start by saying that um, campaign is multi um, is multi channel, and what um, Atiku did today is to bring message to a, to the widest audience through um, technology, and what we are bringing to the um, table is different from the postulation of every other person. For example, Atiku is speaking to five key. Um, um, campaign agendas. One is talking about restructuring in this country. He's not just talking about it, he's written a book on restructuring. And he believes that uh, power sharing and, I mean, um, the, the whole issue of concentration of power at the center must be devolved down to local government and states. Did this stipulate when he will restructure Nigeria? Should he win the election? His, his article is going to kick the ground running immediately, immediately. Where, if, when, if, if, should he win? When he will restructure Nigeria? It's a matter of when he wins. You know, because, because we don't have if, promises about restructuring Nigeria. This is not the first time. Atiku so the is, question Atiku is, is not giving, how will Atiku he go about not, it? When will he do it? Atiku it's in the first six months Atiku, or in the first year? Atiku is not giving lip service to restructuring. I'm telling you that he authored a book on restructuring. When it was not safe for any northerner to talk about restructuring, Atiku boldly spoke about restructuring. So he's speaking from his heart, and I speak Atiku, whatever he says, he stands by it. And I want to tell you that it is not going to be um, a matter of one or two years of postulation. It is something that is going to start immediately. He has the capacity to make sure that all his five agendas kick start from the first day in office. And apart from that, he's going to talk about the, he's, he's going to face the issue of economy. And he cannot fight economy, the economy without fighting corruption. For example, just yesterday, the president came back from the United Nations and put up the um, Climate Change Council. And in putting up the, 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 a committee to manage the Climate um, Change Council, he appointed Sali Sudairu, who is facing ICPC right now for the fraud of 6.5 billion naira. Alleged fraud. Alleged fraud of 6.5 billion, a former director in the Federal Ministry of Environment. As I speak with you, we are trying to assess $10 billion annually to uh, cushion the effect of climate change and to create infrastructural facilities for us. And South Africa, for example, just got $8.7 billion grants from uh, this climate change thing. And we are expecting to get $10 billion annually as grants for the, for, for the management of uh, um, the funds. And you are appointing somebody who is undergoing criminal, alleged criminal investigation to the tune of $6.5 billion. And you think there will be no due diligence from the donors and by, we may end up losing and not even getting this money. These are the type of things that Atiku right. is coming to correct. These are the type of things Atiku is coming to ameliorate. Right. Square pegs will be in square poles. Nobody with criminal tendency or undergoing criminal investigation will come and occupy office. I am tying that issue of corruption to the problem of the economy. So PDP is bringing some sense uh, to the, into to the, the, to the, econ to so the, you're bringing to the, some the sense economy. into the, into the fray. I'm, you, you can decide to use whatever vocabulary. No, no, I'm asking. But I'm telling if, you that, I'm that asking. the Atiku will not appoint people questionable characters, people who are undergoing criminal investigations, people who have stolen or looted mm. from government. That is what is happening right now. Just and, more, yeah. and, and not just that. Mm. Atiku also is speaking to the issue of our power situation in this country. 
Atiku is speaking to the issue of insecurity that is the major problem in this country today. We don't have foreign direct investment any longer. People are afraid. They, they can't sleep with their eyes closed. You can't travel from here to Kaduna, mm. except you go with your anointing oil and you pray like never, like as if prayer is out of um, fashion. You, the country is completely unsafe. We have never gotten to this, I mean, stage. In our, in our national Just life. Just give me a moment. L let, me, let me speak to uh, my lord. And of course, uh, perhaps your allusion to the issue of uh, the grant you are talking about is actually a form of foreign direct investment into Nigeria, not a grant, actually. Uh, just uh, a point of correction there. Uh, but your candidate uh, has said that he's a unifier. Yeah. Be beyond the title, how does it hold to unify this country? To start with, Atiku is a celebrated problem solver. What do you mean? What I mean is that he has the competence and the capacity to solve the problem because he understands this problem. He knows this country in and out. Having been vice president and a very, very celebrated one at that, and from the postulations he has made so far, there is no doubt to the fact that he is the most experienced to take us out of the ditch that the APC have dropped us. Atiku of When you say ditch, what exactly do you mean? Koto, Rami, Hole. We are in an outrageous, we are in an outrageously calamitous situation where nothing, no facet of our national life is working. People, the, the chap, chapter 14 to be of the constitution says the primary occupation of government is the security and the welfare of the people. Today, there is no security not to talk of welfare. So we are in a very precarious situation. Nigeria is extremely sick. It's like a car being driven by a drunken driver. No part of this country is safe. The question I asked, Senator, yes. is if you say that you are a mechanic and I ask you, how would you fix my car? You need to be able to tell me. That so you're, you said your candidate, and he has said, he's professed that he's the unifier Nigeria needs. It, it, how will he unite this nation? That's the question Nigerians would question like to know. I'm, I'm, and I'm answering you that the only Nigerian today among the presidential candidates that can be trusted by Nigerians from every walk of life and part of this country is Atiku Abubakar. In the 36 states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Atiku is welcomed in every state in this country. It's a home for him. He is the only one that can be seen as a detribalized Nigerian. He is the only one that cannot be accused as a religious bigot in this country. He is the only one that has friends and brothers from every part of this country. Nobody, including Bola Ahmed Tinubu, will accuse Atiku Abubakar of being a tribalist or of being a religious by God. He is the only one that Nigerians can trust. The Igbos will be comfortable with. Senator. The Yorubas will be comfortable Senator. with. Senator. The Aousas will be comfortable with. We from the Middle Belt will be com uh, comfortable uh, if with. If I may follow up on that question, uh, the, uh, so for those who are watching, uh, who are not members of your party, if I, those members of your party will, will say, oh, if he says he's a unifier, uh, how much of that role has he even played in your party? Has he been able to even unify your party that is facing internal, deep, uh, deep internal crises that is not being fixed at the moment? I will start by telling you that I've said this on this platform before, that democracy is noisy. And in every family, there is bound to be struggles, there is bound to be disagreements. But I can tell you that Atiku has done very well in unifying the PDP. And it's an ongoing exercise. As I speak with you, many people who were in the declaration in Port Harcourt that they would not be part of the uh, presidential campaign council were present yesterday at the inauguration of the campaign council. It's the effort of Atiku Abubakar. He has shown ma 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 magnanimity. So he has shown maturity. That's how he's he going shown, to unite He Nigeria. has shown that fatherly fatherly concern. It is that style that they were used in uniting Nigerians? I'm Nigeria. not, I've not said it's using that style. I'm tell, you asked a question, yeah. and I'm trying to explain to you. And I'm that, following up that by he saying... Has, he since... has shown that capacity that 
he, he, even the God, God Almighty that will serve is unable to put every man on track. So whether you like it or not, some people will still go to hell, despite the number of evangelism, number of churches and mosques we have in this country. So a tickle that I know, in terms of unifying this country, in because we have never been this divided in our history as a nation. Senator, and because the of the primordial sentiment yeah. that is creating the division mm -hmm. is because of injustice. And Atiku is coming to make sure that there's justice for every Nigerian, irrespective of where you come from, irrespective of your religion or irrespective of your ethnicity. And the agitation for this unity will be cured because justice is the only cure to injustice. L let's anchor because that's exactly the agitation in your party, injustice. That's what some of your members are screaming that uh, there's imbalance. Uh, there seems to be position skewed to one section of the of the country but on a final note uh you mentioned that, the issue that, that, just that issue, that we, issue we need quickly. we need to we need to yeah but quickly, i need to respond close, to that just a moment i'll allow you please just a moment i need to put in this question and it's very important the issue of electricity that you mentioned yes. which is very critical uh for those who are asking is it that article want to come and fix a mistake that has been alleged to have caused the reason why we have not been able to have electricity in nigeria today i want to say Categorically, the article did not make any mistake and is not responsible for any problem you have. Atiku Rada gave an advice as vice president of this country that we should source for, I mean, diversify our sources of um, energy and power in this country. That advice was jettisoned. And because of that, even the meeting that ratified the NIPP project was not attended by Atiku. And Atiku have preferred solution that we need to nucleate power in this country. If we need to do away with the national grid and nucleate power, let each um, nucleus of this country, each constituency or settlement in this country, build their own power concentration and deliver power to Nigerians. And he has come up with a systematic approach to the problem of solving power in, the, in, in, in this country. Mm. And if time will permit, I will go ahead to give you and elucidate time will on... Happen. Time will not permit us. Okay, but the campaign, but the campaign has started. Don't it, worry. It has. It has. You and will I'm... have uh, ample time, I promise you, uh, between now and February to be able to uh, speak more on your party's agenda. Thank you so much indeed, Senator Dino Melaye, for coming tonight.